and, and what happens in the body. Because the body does not care that we have food readily, readily available. We are so blessed to live in America that we can just go on our phone, hit the Uber Eats app, and have a millennial knock on our door with food in 30 minutes, right? But the body does not know about that. So when we mimic our ancestors and go a period of time without food, amazing things start to happen. So let's talk a little bit about what exactly is fasting. It's simply something you don't do. You're just not eating food. It's going a period of time without eating food. A lot of people confuse fasting with cutting calories. But fasting, intermittent fasting, is not about eating less. It's about eating less often. It's about going a period of time allowing your body to heal. Because it takes a lot of energy and a lot of resources to process food, to digest food. So if we are doing that, then our body is not using energy to heal, to repair injuries, to recycle cells. And I'm going to talk all about that. So fasting just means you're not eating food. You're going to a period of time where you're letting your body do its thing. And we were designed, the body was designed to heal. The body was designed to thrive, as I mentioned. So when you remove the interference by removing food all the time, the body will heal. Because the average American eats 17 to 21 times per day. 17 to 21 times per day. I know that's a crazy stat. You're thinking, how is that even possible? Well, I'm not saying you're sitting down at a table 17 to 21 times a day, but I'm saying this. They're grabbing a handful of almonds. Speaking of almonds, right? They're drinking a kombucha. They're biting uh, some yogurt. They're drinking a sip of juice. Every time you raise glucose and insulin in the body, when you snack like that, it's a meal to the body, and you're automatically gone from a lean, fasted state to a fed state, and you're storing fat energy. You're storing food energy. Because when we eat food, the body is so smart, all it wants to do is survive, it will raise glucose and insulin and store fat. It wants to store fat because it doesn't know when the next meal is going to come. So we're designed to store fat, so when we don't eat food, we can start pulling out that fat for energy. So when we raise glucose and insulin from the healthiest snack in the world, carrots and hummus, whatever it is, you are in a fed state and you're raising insulin, and insulin is the only fat storage hormone that we have. We have over 600 hormones in the body. We have eight fat-burning hormones that we know of, but only one fat storage hormone, and that hormone is insulin. And whenever insulin is called, the fat storage hormones are gone. They're scattered. It's like little kids in a playground. These eight little kids, they're fat-burning hormones. They're doing their thing, burning fat. All of a sudden, you eat something. Insulin is called into the playground. Those kids scatter. The fat-burning hormones are gone because they cannot coexist. So whenever you snack, you're raising insulin, and you're storing fat. Whenever you don't snack, whenever you fast, you are activating your fat burning hormones and you're healing the body. So we were designed to go through feast, famine. So eating and fasting. We have 70 trillion cells in the body, and every single cell is designed for feast and famine. We're designed to eat and feast, and we're designed to not eat and fast. So going back to fasting, intermittent fasting gets us back to these ancestral principles that have been around. So I want to talk a little bit about this guy that I wrote about in my book. By the way, I've got some good news for everybody today. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then there was a couple others. I brought my fasting cheat sheet. So I have a best-selling book called The Fasting Cheat Sheet. And then as a gift for making it here, we have to talk about I have a copy for everybody here today. Okay? Thank so you. Uh, Thank here's my you. Book. What it does is answers the answers the top 20 questions in here. Top 20 questions on fasting, and I back it up with science, so you can learn a little bit more when we're done with this talk. And that's my girlfriend, Tassi, by the way. Let's, let's applaud her for uh, Thank you. starting here. Okay, so when it comes to, I was talking about a gentleman that I wrote about in my book. The Guinness World Record for the longest recorded water fast. If you don't know the answer, I want you to guess. If you know the answer, don't guess. So what do you think? the longest recorded water fast. It's the Guinness World Record. It was a man. He went how long without food? What? Two weeks. What else? Who wants to take a guess here? I don't know, I know the answer. <laughs> oh, you know the answer. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to take a guess. What do you think? You just, you just to make sure that you say the longest he went. He just had water. Just water in. Uh, four months. Four months. Okay, so two weeks, four months. 382 days. Okay, I wrote about him in my book. No, so he was a 450 pound man from Scotland, so he was morbidly obese, and he went on a medically supervised, water only fast with a multivitamin for 
we learned in 82 days. His electrolytes looked fantastic. His blood work looked fantastic. He felt fantastic. He didn't have any new skin. And after 400, uh, after 382 days, he went from 450 pounds to 180 pounds. Okay? That's just an extreme example to show you, hey, the body knows what to do. We have fat on our body, so we could burn that fat when we're not, when we're not eating. Even somebody like me, who's lean, I don't practice fasting for weight loss, although it's a very powerful weight loss tool, but somebody who has 10% body fat, which is very, very lean, they have about 60 to 70,000 calories on their body, they can go weeks without food and be fine. So skipping a meal, it's no big deal. Okay, that's just, I wanna put it in context there. So let's talk a little bit about the benefits of fasting, and then I'm gonna talk about the myths that people say about fasting, and I'm gonna debunk them with, with science. My favorite benefit of fasting is something called autophagy. Anybody heard of autophagy before? Okay, autophagy is an amazing process in the body. It's a switch that's turned on when you fast, and it's cellular recycling, cellular repair. So the analogy I'm gonna give you is this. We have Publix, we have Whole Foods, we have our supermarkets. When we go into the supermarket section, we have the produce section, right, the fruits and vegetables, and we have the man who's working there, who's looking for produce that has been expired, and he's removing it from the section and putting new, new produce, right? The body does the same thing when you fast. It turns out out of the 70 trillion cells that we have, 70 billion of them need to be recycled every single day. Just like that refrigerator you have back home with groceries that have an expiration date on them, your body's the same way. You have cells, you have protein, you have mitochondria within your cells that need to be recycled. And when we're eating all the time, every two to three hours, we're snacking, we never activate this autophagy process. Autophagy stands for self-eating. That's what it means, eat by itself. The body is going within its cells, cleaning it out, picture this feeding the cells, cleaning out your cells, it's tearing down cells that are not even working anymore. We have cells in our body that are called senescent cells. They're like zombie cells. They have no function in the body. They're just there, kind of just moving around, creating disease, they're zombie cells. So when you fast, your body is so stinking smart, the innate intelligence within your body knows what to do. It goes for the damaged stuff first. It goes for the least important cargo first. It's like a ship that is going through the Atlantic Ocean with 100 passengers, and now they're entering the storm, and they're encountering all this water, and they're about to sink. What is the captain of that ship going to say? Hey, we need a get all the cargo on the ship that is least important, and let's dump it so we can become lighter and get through the storm. The body does the same thing during a fast. It looks for unimportant cargo, and it uses it for fuel. That's what happens when you activate autophagy. It's your body's cleaning process. The Nobel Prize winner in 2016 won the Nobel Prize for his research in autophagy. So there's certain ingredients that activate autophagy. There's berberin, there's um, uh, bergamot, citrus bergamot, there's, there's uh, polyphenols that help activate it, olive oil helps activate it, but the most potent way is fasting. And then, going to your point, Jesus, if you get exercise in the fasted state, you get even more autophagy. Because when you force adaptation in the body, all 70 trillion cells, the good cells you have in your body, they get stronger, and the bad cells, they don't adapt. Your body will use it as fuel. So you get stronger inside your body. So that's the most important benefit, in my opinion, autophagy. And there's a whole list of things that I'm gonna go through, that one's my favorite. The second benefit of intermittent fasting, and I'm gonna teach you how to apply it too before I, when I'm done with the benefit, I'll show you how to apply intermittent fasting. But the second benefit is something called energy diversion. So I work with a group of 50 doctors all across the US and Canada. One of them is my mentor, Dr. Daniel Pampa, who is a world leader in the health space. I think he's the most brilliant person in the world, Dr. Daniel Pompa, you should write it down, Pompa, P-U-I-P-A, look him up. He has a, he had coined this term called energy diversion. So what happens is this. It takes massive amounts of energy and resources, as I mentioned, and blood flow to process food. When we start chewing that food and taking the macronutrients, digesting it into micronutrients, and then assimilating it all through the body, it's a big process. It takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of blood flow, so when you're fasted, now you have all of these resources and your body diverts it to healing, to crushing your day. It's like this. We just had the holidays here, right? We had New Year's, we had uh, Hanukkah, we had Christmas. We had some days off from work. What happens when you're at home from a day off from work? You start 
cleaning their, around the house. You start doing things you haven't done in a while. Your body does the same thing. And you stop, if it, when it's not busy anymore, processing food, it has all this time, and it diverts energy away from eating and digesting to cleaning the house, which is the body. So energy diversion is great because also it helps fuel the brain. So if you want to have mental clarity, mental focus, if you just want to have more energy throughout your day, now you have all of this energy, instead of using it for digestion, you're using it for the task at hand. Because the body does this. It raises something in it called counter-regulatory hormones. So when we go 16 hours or so without food, the body starts to think this. Oh crap, we're in a famish. There's no food in our environment, even though we could just go here and order some food. The body doesn't know that. So it raises these hormones in the body that pumps your body full of energy. You have cortisol. You have human growth hormone which celebrities pay thousands of dollars for, by the way. Your body does it naturally. A 24-hour fast showed a 2,000% increase in human growth hormone in men, which is muscle-preserving, fat-burning, anti-aging, and a 1,300% increase in human growth hormone in women. So we have the body literally pumping you full of energy so you can go out there into the wild and hunt and kill your next meal. But the ultimate hack is that we are blessed to live in America, we don't have to do that. So we're gonna use all that energy to just crush our day. To feel good. It's amazing. <laughs> so that's the second benefit. You have a question? Yeah. yeah. How long does it take for the body to adapt or to adjust when it comes to fat? I'm gonna I'm gonna answer your question. Okay. I'm gonna I have to work the end. Yeah, good question. I, I promise I'll answer. <laughs> the next benefit is going to be burning fat. I mean who wants to burn some extra fat? Let's be honest. Okay. Only, only like 50% of you. <laughs> the body will use that food energy for energy. It'll pull out fat. It'll reverse insulin resistance. It'll reverse diabetes. I just posted something on my uh, Facebook the other day. I have my a program called Keto Camp Academy where I teach how to do all this. And I give monthly health coaching. One of the members, Shannon, she might be watching right now. Shout out to Shannon. She was, I was doing a coaching call with them last month and she posted there on the, on, the, on the comments she said I just returned my insulin my unused insulin to my doctor okay she's she was type diabetic and she started doing keto and fasting doing the way that I teach it she no longer needed her insulin so the body can heal as long as we remove the interference but if we go to the American Diabetes Association website what is it going to tell you hey we cannot reverse this but we can manage it and you can live a healthy life we need to take our health in our own hands it's, it's enough already. I, I mentioned those stats, right? And Einstein knew it before anybody else. He said, intellectuals solve problems, geniuses prevent them. So by the time we're done here in about 25 minutes or so, I want every single one of you to be empowered to be a genius because you are. This information is transformational, not just for you, but for your family members, for your friends, for your coworkers. This is the information you share with them that will make a big difference. Because that's a perfect example right there. What if I told you that the same diet that the American Diabetes Association promotes is the same diet that causes diabetes. Okay, what if I told you the same food that's fed to chemo patients in the hospital is the same food that causes cancer? Okay, we need to be our own health detective. I call myself the health detective, but I empower other people to be their own health detective. So when you fast, you can reverse things like type 2 diabetes. Okay, I'm talking about type 2 diabetes, not type 1. You can reverse insulin resistance. Oh, and by the way, you can also prevent diseases like cancer. I gave you the stats earlier, right? Well, the autophagy process, when you have damaged zombie cells that I was talking about, some of those cells, if they're not dealt with, will turn cancerous. That's why there's a world-renowned leader in cancer research, the oncologist from Boston College, his name was Dr. Thomas Seafried, who wrote the book, Cancer is a Metabolic Disease. You know what he said in his book? If you were to complete a seven-day water-only fast once per year, you would reduce your chances of any cancer by 95%. 95% through autophagy. So why knows what to do? We just gotta remove the interference. And right now in America, that interference is eating too much and too often. So you could lose weight because you're getting healthy. Because you don't lose weight to get healthy. You get healthy to lose weight. So when you fast, you reduce inflammation, all of a sudden now your fat burning hormones get into your cells and you lose weight as a side effect. 
The way that traditional medicine teaches it is to look at the symptom and treat that. When the symptom is far removed from the cause, to give you an example, when I was obese, I did not have a weight problem. I had a weight symptom. If I were to just focus on my being overweight and cutting my calories and exercising more, it would have just resulted in failure long term because cutting calories is a huge distraction from what really matters and that's the inflammation in the body and that's your hormones. I don't count calories. The body does not have any mechanisms in place. The body is not a calculator, it's not a bank account, it's not a math equation. The body is a complex chemistry lab. So if you have somebody teaching you about calories, they are confused. They are so far removed from what really matters and that is the hormones and the cells. So when you practice intermittent fasting, guess what happens? You start down-regulating inflammation and a side effect is the symptoms go away, whether it's fatigue, sleep issues, skin issues, autoimmune. You could reverse that, because it gets me to my next point here, which is the next benefit of fasting. You can reset your DNA. I said we, are, we have 70 trillion cells. Every cell has within it your DNA. Imagine the DNA right there in your cells. Well, you were probably told, you maybe said, you said to yourself, I was born with this set of genes, cancer, diabetes, runs from the family, it's just a matter of time before I get it, right? People say it all the time, they believe their genes are their destiny, when that could not be further from the truth. There's something called epigenetics, which means above the genes, meaning we control the expression of our genes. It is true that we cannot change the genes we were born with. My father died from the complications of diabetes, and I have diabetes genes inside of me. But I will never, ever get diabetes. I'm never going to turn on that gene. So what happens is we're born with a set of genes. Those are the bullets that load the gun. But our decisions, our lifestyle, even our thoughts determine whether or not we pull the trigger on that gun. So we have 90 to 95% control over the expression of our genes. So when you fast, you're able to turn off bad genes and turn on good genes. So I want you to think of genes as these lights right here. If I hit a switch, I can turn off the lights. If I turn on the switch, I can turn on the lights. Your genes are the same way. You can turn on genes, you can turn off genes. You are in control of your future, not your genetics, and not whatever what anybody else has led you to be. What, what I teach here, I hope you're going to be a little bit challenging and different. It's the complete opposite of what mainstream media talks about. Right? We have conventional medicine, we have mainstream medicine, we have articles on Facebook saying, you gotta count your calories, it's all about an energy hypothesis. And I'm telling you the exact opposite. So what I want you to do is follow the Costanza, the George Costanza method here. Any, any Seinfeld fans from the 90s? Anybody watch Seinfeld? So Seinfeld was a popular sitcom, and George Costanza was a character on there, it was a total character. He was getting crappy results in his life. He was miserable, he was unhealthy, he was complaining, relationships were bad, finances were non-existent. So he had an idea on an episode to do everything opposite of what he had been doing up until that point. And everything in his life improved. Finances, relationships, he was happier. He did everything opposite. So what I teach is the George Costanza effect. Look at what mainstream media is talking about, what you're seeing on Facebook. Do the complete opposite, and you're going to get better results in your life. I don't want you to believe me. I want you to apply it to your own research. And the only thing that matters are the results that you're getting. So those are some of the benefits of intermittent fasting. We have autophagy, we have energy diversion, we have, oh, I didn't even mention this one, we have a boost in our energy. So what happens, and I, I did kind of touch upon it, those counter-regulatory hormones, your body's pumping you full of energy, but also this, you have all that blood flow that's now not being used for digestion, and it's being used to fuel brain. So you're gonna have more mental clarity and less brain fog. So that's another benefit right there. You have burning fat, reversing insulin resistance, resetting your DNA. Now let's talk a little bit about some of the, the myths out there surrounding intermittent fasting. Because I used to teach this when I was a personal trainer for so many years. I used to teach my clients, hey, if you skip a meal, you're gonna go into starvation mode. And I realized that there is no science to back that up. And in fact, science shows the opposite. And now I tell people, if you want to age faster than anybody you know, eat every two to three hours. That'll do it. Because when you are eating every two to three hours, like I mentioned, you're taking all this energy away from healing and you're using it for digestion. Your body has to go through a process, raise glucose, raise insulin. Your cells create energy and smoke the same way I, if I was going to burn fire, would it create energy right here? 
So if you're eating every two or three hours, you're doing this all the time, you're aging faster. So there's a myth out there that says if you fast, you're going to slow down your metabolism and you're going to go into starvation mode. I got something to tell you. A study showed after a four-day water fast, the metabolism increased by 13%. It was the complete opposite of what people say. And you might ask, why does that happen? Well, it goes back to what I said, those counter-regulatory hormones, your body's pumping you full of energy to go find food, so it revs up your metabolism, not knowing that you are fine, you are safe. So your metabolism will not increase during a fast, not decrease. The next myth is, where will I get my energy from? I need food, I need breakfast, I need to get that glucose spike to get through the day. The reason that is, is because you taught your body to burn sugar for fuel and not fat. So the way I teach fasting is not even practice it until you are fat adapted. Until you teach yourself, all 70 trillion cells, how to burn fat instead of sugar. Most people are burning sugar, they're burning glucose, which is a very toxic fuel source. That's like a Mack truck speeding through I-95 here with all the smoke coming out of it because of the exhaust pipe. That's what's happening in your cell when you're burning sugar. You have all this cellular smoke. When you convert to burning fat and producing ketones, now your body is like a Tesla cruising through the highway. The body is designed to burn fat as its primary fuel source. It's a much cleaner energy fuel source. So when you do that first, if you get fat adapted first, which is the first pillar I teach in my Keto Camp Academy, then the second pillar is comparing intermittent fasting, and you will not have to worry about energy levels because your body has the metabolic flexibility to go from burning sugar to burning fat and back and forth. When people experience low energy through fasting, it's because they haven't done the work to get fat adapted first. So I teach a 28-day keto jumpstart, teach the body how to burn fat. Once they go through that process, then you carry intermittent fasting, and you get all the benefits that I was talking about. Okay, so when you hear somebody say, I did fasting and I didn't get any of those benefits, they didn't put in the work. Fasting is like a muscle you develop. You wouldn't just sit on your couch for 10 years and say, oh, I heard about CrossFit. I'm going to do a fast tomorrow. You're going to destroy yourself. You're going to hurt yourself. You're not, you're not going to do that workout. It's going to suck. Same thing with fasting. You would not, you would not be a sugar burner eating two to three hours every two to three hours for 20 years and say, "Oh, I watched Ben give a talk on fasting. I'm going to fast tomorrow." No, it's going to look ugly, and you're going to hurt yourself. Fasting is a powerful tool. The same way a chainsaw is a powerful tool. A chainsaw can get the job done and get you amazing results, right? You know how to use it, but if you don't know how to use it, a chainsaw can hurt you. It could even kill you. So we want to make sure we know how to use the tool. The book you have in your hands that I just gave out, if you didn't get one, I'll, 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 I'll get I'll get, I'll get, sure I get you one. Yeah. The class will give you one. The next bit is I'm gonna lose muscle. I used to own a CrossFit gym in Miami. Now I got that all the time. See, I was I've been practicing and teaching fasting since 2013 before it was in vogue and popular. And when I teach people fasting, especially in my CrossFit gym, they looked at me like I was nuts. Like, what are you talking about? I work out so hard, I lose all my muscle. Well, it turns out, the body's not stupid. It's not going to eat food, and then store that food as body fat, and then when all the chips are down, burn the muscle when we have body fat. No, it's going to burn the fat first, because saying the body's going to burn muscle instead of fat is like, is like this. It's so ridiculous. It's like storing all this firewood in the summertime, body fat, to get ready for the cold winter. And winter rolls around, you have all this body fat, firewood, and then instead of using that firewood, you grab your couch and chop that up in order to the purpose. It makes no sense. The body's not going to do that. It's going to burn its body fat first. In fact, the body will not tap it towards muscle stores until you reach 5% body fat or less. Nobody in here is close to that. That's pretty low. I'm not even close to that. So the body will not lose muscle. It will actually raise human growth hormone to prevent the muscle loss. So the workouts you're doing, Doing fasting state, you'll get even more benefits. Alright, I talked about the history of fasting, the benefits of fasting, myths surrounding fasting. Now, how do you apply it to your day to day life? The first thing is to get keto adapted. Okay, how do you do that? Well, that requires more than just the time we have left. But the basic principles are this you want to lower your carbohydrates, you want to increase your healthy fats and protein, and electrolytes, magnesium included. So when you do that, your body is going to start to figure out, oh, we don't have a lot of glucose, a lot of carbohydrates, we have all this fat, let's start burning the fat instead. So here is a list of healthy fats for the thing is, uh, you have avocados and avocado oils, you have olives and olive oil, 
you have grass-fed beef, if you eat beef, you have fish, you have eggs, you have nuts, you have seeds, you have uh, coconut, coconut oil, MCT oil. Those are what you want to have along with healthy protein and a whole bunch of green leafy vegetables. You want to stay away from vegetable oils. You want to stay away from pasteurized dairy because you can do keto the wrong way. There's no cookie cutter approach to keto. If you go on Google, Dr. Google, and type in what is the keto diet, you get 183 million results. Uh, every single article can place something different. The way I teach is very different. So you want to make sure you stay away from dirty keto and stick with those healthy fats I spoke about. You do that for about three to four weeks, and then you start fasting. So how do you fast? Here's a very easy way to start if you want to start. Three hours before bed, you stop eating. Three hours after waking up, at least within three hours after waking up, you don't eat anything. You go from there. The best schedule is what I like, it's called an 18-6 format. So 18 hours out of the day, you're in a fasted state. Six hours out of the day, you're eating. There's your eating window, your feasting window. And you want to make sure you're eating protein and fat with each meal, and you're eating until full. You're reminding the body that it's not starving. So what does that look like on your schedule? It means, once you fat adapted, you just skip breakfast, you break your fast at 12 p.m., and you eat until 6 p.m. and you have two big meals within that window. Or if you're a breakfast person, you'll have breakfast and lunch and skip dinner. The goal is to have about a six to eight hour window of when you're eating and then a fasting window outside of that. And you want to definitely use sleep as your fasting window. It's also important to have some electrolytes, some sea salt and water throughout the fast because your body's going to lose a lot of electrolytes and you want to replenish it and you want to feel good because you've probably heard about the keto flu before. It's really just carbohydrate withdrawal symptoms. It's an electrolyte imbalance and it's also toxins being released. So the way I teach keto in my Keto Camp Academy is a four-week approach and nobody, not one person in my academy, I have over 145 members, not one has gotten the keto flu. Because if you do it the right way, you will not get the keto flu. It's a negative connotation to people who just do not understand how to do it the right way. So that's the way you do it. And then if you want to get more of that autophagy, I would throw in a 24-hour water fast once per week. I know Vincent does a lot of those fasts. I did a five-day water fast last year. I'm going to do another one with my group this year. To get that autophagy, it's preventative. We're being proactive here instead of reactive. So I do have my Keto Camp Academy, and I want to encourage every single one of you to get in there. It's an online program. You can get monthly health coaching from me for about $1 a day. Even less than that, I have a coupon code for you. So write this down. KetoCampAcademy.com, you can put it in your phone, KetoCampAcademy.com. If you put in KKA at checkout, you'll get 30% off your membership. It's a month to month membership, you can cancel any time, but I will teach you the exact four weeks to get keto adapted and then how to do fasting the right way. You also get a monthly health coaching call with me, you get meal plans, more importantly than all of that, you get the structure to help you feel better and look better and live a long, healthy life. I've been doing this a long time, I work with 50 doctors, and we have a structure that works. So I'd love to help you. Those are, that's the synopsis of fasting. I'm gonna answer your questions for you. I'm gonna just turn off the cameras first, but I wanna thank you for your energy and everybody who's listening Wait, to Wait, can today. you repeat that thing again, the KK, what was it? KKA, KetoCampAcademy.com, for you two on, on, uh, on the internet. At what.com? KetoCampAcademy.com. So if you put, it's yeah. Keto, then it's camp with the K. Oh, okay. Academy.com. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah, and I'll answer your questions for you. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to turn this off. Thank you. What questions do you have?